What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're getting into the ultimate set-top box battle, 4K edition. And at the moment, there are three major set-top boxes that have the ability to stream 4K video, but which one packs the most bang for your buck? Since 4K content is rather limited at the moment, it's a good idea to invest in something that caters to the ecosystem you're invested in while providing enough of everything else until 4K really hits the mainstream. So today we're taking a look at the three top contenders in this space. We have the Roku 4, Amazon Fire TV, and the Nvidia Shield. Each lives in its own space, but offer very different experiences for different types of people. But enough talking about it, let's get down to business. Oh, and you might want to stick around to the end on this one. I got something really cool I think you'll want to hear about. First up, we're taking a look at Roku 4. I used to be a big fan of Roku players, but in my opinion, they fell a bit behind the curve. With Roku 4, we have a bit of a different design over previous models, and it's a bit larger than before with similar aesthetics. Internally, there's a quad-core processor, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, and the ability to push 4K up to 60 frames per second. Around the back, you'll find an Ethernet port, optical audio output, an HDMI 2.0 port, micro SD card slot for some additional game and channel storage, and the power input, while a single USB port lives on the side of the device which can be used for storage. And trust me, you'll need it because the Roku 4 only packs 256 megabytes of internal storage. Seriously, 256 megabytes. The remote is pretty clunky, but it feels solid. And it even comes along with a pair of headphones, which can be used for private listening with the headphone jack on the side of the remote. It can also be used for gaming with the Roku 4. That is, if you can find any decent games in Roku's ecosystem. There's also voice support, but honestly, it's really nothing special. Roku 4 does have a pretty good amount of 4K content available though, loads of custom channels to fire up, and the best part is, since it's a third-party entity, it supports streaming services from Amazon Prime Instant Video and Google Play, and along with that, your standard stuff like Hulu, Netflix, and others. It's certainly fluid in the software department, but even with a slight refresh, it looks like something straight out of 2005. Roku 4 is nice, but at 129 bucks, it may be priced a little high for what it offers. Next up, we're checking out the Nvidia Shield TV, and I've covered this in a couple of videos on the channel before, and even compared it to the new Apple TV, and if you want to check out those videos, I will leave some links below for you. But with a gamepad included in the box over a traditional remote, it's clear that the Shield is aimed at gamers, though there's a lot here for everyone. The Nvidia Shield packs a quad-core Tegra X1 processor, 3GB of RAM, either 16 or 500GB storage configurations, HDMI 2.0, which is also capable of 4K at 60 frames per second, an Ethernet port, a micro SD card slot, and two USB 3.0 ports for expandable storage. And along with supporting Bluetooth headphones for private listening, the gamepad and optional remote also include a headphone jack as a wired listening alternative. The Shield software experience is where things get interesting. First off, it's running Android TV, which caters to those invested in Google's ecosystem. With this, you get the Google Play Store for apps, movies, and music with services like Netflix and YouTube for 4K streaming. You also get Google search integration which can be accessed via the gamepad and remote as well as cast integration. There's a wide range of Android apps and games available and even game titles that work specifically with the Shield's Tegra X1 processor. The Shield also packs GeForce Now which allows you to stream full-on PC games from the cloud straight to your TV. Think of it like Netflix for gaming. GeForce Now will run you $7.99 a month but with the games available to stream it may be worth it for those looking beyond the place store for entertainment, but you can get a three month free trial to start things out. The bottom line is, with Android TV on the Nvidia Shield, there's a lot of room for every type of person here. And with more expansion options, loads of app compatibility, and console-like performance for games, its $199 price tag for the base model makes the Shield a lot more appealing than the Roku 4. And if you buy one now, you'll also get the traditional remote thrown in for free, which is a pretty awesome deal going on. Finally, we're looking at the new Fire TV. This is Amazon's solution for the set-top box world, and unfortunately, there's not much different here over the last model, and the features it does add are swept under the rug when compared to the competition. Along with that, unless you're tied into Amazon's ecosystem already, you're going to miss out on any paid Google content you may have because there's nothing Google about this little black box. Inside, there's a quad-core processor, 2GB of RAM, and 8GB of storage. And on the back, there's a micro SD card slot now, which is a new addition 
and nice, but there's an HDMI 1.4 port, which sadly is only capable of up to 4K streaming at 30 frames per second. There's also an ethernet port and a USB 2.0 port for expandable storage as well. While the Fire TV's included remote doesn't support a headphone jack like you'll find with the Roku and Nvidia Shield, it does also support Bluetooth headphones for private listening. And along with that, the remote also features voice search capabilities, which allow you to take advantage of Amazon's new Alexa Assistant. The software experience here is similar to Android TV, but without the Google. Everything is definitely fluid and works just as well as the others, but with the lack of Google services, it's kind of a tough sell for anyone who's not a diehard Amazon fan. That doesn't mean there's a lack of apps or content though, and you'll find most all other services here like Netflix, Showtime, Hulu, YouTube, and others. In addition to that, there are game titles available as well. Nothing that compares with the Shield, but with Amazon's optional gamepad, at least you can game in comfort and play some decent titles in the process. The Fire TV is definitely a great set-top box solution, but with the lack of Google services and topping out at 4K resolution at 30 frames per second, it's just not quite as capable as the others. Though its frame rate may be lower, its price is certainly the lowest out of the bunch, coming in at just 99 bucks. So here we are with three different solutions at three different prices. But which one offers the most bang for your buck? Well, it certainly depends on what you need. There's no right or wrong answer here. But if you don't want to have to make a decision, I've got some pretty cool news for you. I've actually teamed up with Nvidia to give you a chance to rule the living room. We'll be giving one of you a brand new 4K TV, an entire Nvidia Shield package including the works like the remote, the Shield stand, and even an extra controller, and along with that, you get one year free of 4K Netflix and a year subscription to Nvidia's GeForce Now service. So how do you enter? Well, first off, leave this video a thumbs up, make sure that you're following at Nvidia Shield on Twitter, and leave a comment below letting me know why you want to rule the living room. The start date, end date, and everything else you need to know about this giveaway is going to be listed in the description, so be sure to check that out, but I will be announcing the winner on Twitter, so make sure you're following me there. So let me know what you think about these 4K set-top boxes. Which one do you think is the best? Let me know with a comment below, and thank you very much for all of the support. This is Dom, and I'll catch you in the next video.